Okay, so quick disclaimer. You're going to hear beep. There you go. <laughs> My fire alarm, I have to change it. So that's just a quick disclaimer. But let me share my screen. Okay, so these are, I guess, my favorite or um, the concepts that most interested me or my favorite, you know. Um, first off, folkways. So folkways are basically like everyday norms that somebody does. Um, it could be out of habit, basically something that you, that's so used to your culture. So it's basically out of habit. Like you just do it because you're so used to doing it. I relate to this so much because in my culture, I'm Congolese and in my culture it's common. Like when you greet someone, it's common to give them, um, kiss on the cheek, like, side kisses and we call it bizu um but yeah that's it's really common for me and my culture for us to do that when we meet someone and it's like when i came here or like sometimes and it still happens just sometimes but i've gotten used to like stopping myself um when i meet someone new obviously in america you're not gonna come up to them and like, you know, give them a kiss on the cheek because they're gonna look at you like, what are you doing? Um, so beforehand, it was really hard. Like I had a hard time like holding back cause I would just like try to just like automatically go in, but I've stopped doing that. And I've gotten used to the shaking hands when you first meet someone but I could definitely like relate to this because, you know, that's what I go through. <laughs> um, in daily life, I notice um, folkways, like, like respectful gestures, basically like when you open the door um, behind, when you leave the door open behind someone, um, when you like smile at a stranger, when you pass them by, some people do that, some people don't, but you know. Um, it's also considered rude if you don't say like please or thank you when like uh when the when a gesture <clears throat> at appropriate times basically um it's also it's like a bunch of like little things that you notice people do daily lives during their daily lives that it's just really common it's out of habit and when it's not done it's considered probably rude and my culture is definitely considered like rude because we don't usually shake hands like it's it's considered like out of out of normal next is culture shock um culture shock happens when being introduced to a new culture or something within your culture within the culture it leaves you feeling a little uncomfortable like you're not used to this because you're so used to something else um in my life again <laughs> when i moved here it was definitely a big culture shock um i've been taught to always been for i've been taught to always been i've been always taught to be formal with my elders whether it's school whether it's at home obviously my parents whether it's just strangers, whoever it is, I've always been taught to be formal. I've always been taught to be formal and respectful. So when I moved here and like elementary school, you see kids that like act completely absurd sometimes um, towards teachers, towards parents. Like you see a kid just yelling at their parent or you see a kid yelling at a teacher and a teacher in America isn't gonna, you know, isn't gonna react back. She could, you know, yell. She could, there's little things the teacher could do, but compared to my culture in Africa, a teacher could hit you, <laughs> basically. Like, if you're disrupting the class, you're being disrespectful, anything sort like that, 
a teacher can put their hands on you and your parent isn't going to do anything because yes, you were disturbing. Yes, you were being disrespectful, you know. It's discipline, basically. So when I came here, it was definitely a culture shock because I see like all these kids being rude and disrespectful and you see the teacher doing nothing. So it's like, you know. Um, and others, I would say my cousin recently moved here from Canada and it was definitely, he told me it was like a big like culture shock for him because in Canada, they were able to control Corona and maintain it. And the kids are currently back at school and learning in school, like the normal way. So when he moved here, it was definitely different for him because, you know, he's not used to it and he has to be online and he's never done that. So that was definitely a big culture shock for him. Also in Canada, apparently they celebrate Thanksgiving in October. So when he came here, it was also like a big culture shock because they don't, <laughs> we celebrate in November, but they're so used to celebrating in October. Nature versus nurture. This, um, this basically just questions whether like your behaviors and stuff, experiences are due to your environment, like the environment around you or because of genetics. In my life, I can say um, I, I sometimes ask myself a lot um, because I'm very anxious. I'm, I like, I'm a very anxious person <laughs> and I have anxiety and I sometimes ask myself like, is it because my mother's side of the family, like she, there's a lot, like a lot of us have anxiety. So I ask myself, is that because of my mother's side of the family or and it's just is it just like genetics or is it because everything that I've been through in my life and I prefer not to get caught off guard so that's why like my anxiety builds up a lot whenever something throws me off I wonder sometimes like what side is it um, in daily life, I find it easy to see someone not doing so well in life, like a homeless person or a drug addict, and assume that they had a bad home environment, and if their parents were most likely drug addicts as well. I also assume that people who are successful and wealthy most likely had an ideal home setting and their parents were successful as well. Sometimes you ask yourself, is it like just because, you know, they grew up from a successful home or um, they came up on their own, you know? Stereotypes. Um, stereotype is just basically being a thought that people have about other people without really knowing like they're so used to what they've heard what they've seen so they automatically think like yeah that's the type of people these specific people are it's just stereotyping being stereotypical is not the best thing to do in my life I could definitely say um most stereotypes that I encounter are negative, but in like of oh, in nature, they might seem like a joke with other people. Um, for example, all Africans are very dark, and you can't see you can't see them outside. I've heard that one a lot, and um, also. Another thing you'll hear is like African women are raising the house to take care of their children and to like always um, cook for their husbands. I would say like for the for the all Africans are dark one. I personally I've heard someone say this and I've also heard a conversation 
where someone met a light skin like it was another female and she was light skin but she was african but she was just her skin tone was just like and they were like oh you're you're african and she was like yeah i'm african and then he was like oh how come you're so light and in my head i'm like huh it's i was like i was so confused he was like, how come you're so light? And the girl goes, oh, you know, my parents, just one is light skin, the other is a little darker, but I ended up light skin, but I'm still African. And he goes, oh, like most, like all, usually all Africans are just really dark. And I was like, that's so not true. <laughs> and yeah, like stereotyping is, really just not a good thing and I don't understand why people feel the need to always stereotype someone when you really just don't know whether whether it's like um sexual orientation gender race you know stuff like that like I feel like people should really first get to know or at least do research of some sort instead of automatically stereotyping typing a group or a specific person like it's not the best way to go about things being prejudiced um prejudice is defined in our text as beliefs thoughts feelings and attitudes someone holds about a group um i can say i've been someone's been prejudiced against me like just a long time ago when um, I was having a conversation with one of my peers and um, I I let them know like how I got here, Africa and all of that. And then they're like, oh, you probably traveled like in a boat all the way here. And like, you didn't have enough money to like fly on a plane. And obviously like they attended as a joke and I didn't really like say anything back because in my head, I obviously knew, like, no, I had traveled first class to the States, but, you know, that's, like, people, people's mindset sometimes these days is really weird, and whenever I think back on that, I really find it, like, it's low key, like, disgusting that people can think like that sometimes. But another example that we see that's really popular right now, not popular, but like it's a really big problem is um, when a person, when a person sees a Muslim person and they automatically think like, oh, you know, bomb, like stuff like that. Like, um, stuff like that is really disgusting to me. And I just, that's why I feel like when we, when the, when the discussion if black people can be racist and some people say oh no they just can be they can be they can only be prejudiced i feel like yes we could definitely be prejudiced as well but someone could definitely as well be racist they both play a big part and it doesn't have to matter whether um we've been oppressed like obviously we've been oppressed for a long, long time, but it's it's definitely possible for someone else, for another black person to be racist. But that's another discussion for another day. Um, ageism. Ageism is described as discrimination or prejudice based on someone's age. Um, I've only encountered this like with my elders when you know how older people are, like they'd be like, oh, you're too young. You don't know what you're talking about. You haven't been through life like I have. You haven't like all of this. So they don't really, they don't believe. They don't believe that you can understand things the same way because you're too young. Um, in daily life, I kind of see like when people use the expression, you're driving while elderly. I can definitely see that as being ageism. Um. 
I need to plug my computer in. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, but that's definitely a example of like ages of my tea where people say you're driving like the elderly um because they think um uh, old people drive really slow which i mean sometimes you know it does make sense but um sexual orientation sexual orientation is defined as a person's physical mental emotional and sexual attraction to a particular sex um in my life i'll I identify as a straight woman, but I also have friends, other close friends, and people I know who identify themselves as something different, and I 100% support them. I love the LGBTQ community. I love them. I just, I don't know, something about, like, um, that community just, just really makes me happy. Like, I just... I've never had anything against them. I support them 100%. Um, sexual orientation examples are heterosexual, attraction, which is the attraction to the opposite sex, homosexual, um, the attraction to the same sex, bisexual, attraction to both sexes, and or asexual, which is attraction, which is no attraction to either. The looking glass self refers to our self images being dependent on what we think others think of us. Um, in my life, I would say, like, for example, my hair, right? Um, when I'm thinking about like hairstyles I should do, I first think about like, how would people like see me in it? Obviously, I think about how do I see myself in it, but then I think about how will other people see me in this hair? Will they like be like scared? Like, girl, you shouldn't have done that. Or they'll be like, oh my gosh, yes, like this definitely fits you, this is you, you know? That's what I would say I relate to the looking glass self. Um, in life, um, I would say like someone, when I was on the train earlier this month, <laughs> um, a girl had happened to spill her coffee on her shirt, trying to like, she was rushing to get into the, the train and she just, I guess she like, she bumped and she spilled coffee on herself and she had a stain automatically. And some people who weren't there so if like she, whether she was going to work or whatever, um, some people who weren't there could automatically assume like, oh, that stain on her shirt, she's dirty. Um, she decided to wear dirty clothes to wherever she's going when in reality, you know, she really just, you know, was having a rough day and she ended up spilling on her shirt. Um, corporate crime. Corporate crime is a nonviolent committed Nonviolent crime committed by a corporation or by an individual acting on the behalf of a corporation, also referred to as white collar crime, first defined by sociologist Edwin Sutherland in 1939. Wells Fargo and JP Morgan are of these, these are examples of like corporate crimes that have happened in the past. Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, um, Walmart, Johnson and Johnson, Johnson and Johnson's company. Um, they all somehow, you know, were accused of doing crimes, corporate crimes that benefited them. The caste system, elaborate and complex social systems that combine some occupations, social class, social identity, hierarchy, exclusion and power. Um, the caste system in India is non-changeable. Um, you're still allowed to marry someone um, someone from, you're only, sorry, you're only allowed to marry somebody from the same caste as you 
and discriminate discriminating is against the law um there's these are there's many more casts um there's many more like levels to this cast but the ones i listed i'm not i don't know if i pronounce these right but Bremians, Castrias, Bay Shades, and Chandras. I feel like I pronounced all of that totally wrong. But these are some of the levels of the caste system in India. And I think that is all. Let me stop sharing. I think this is like way more than four minutes, but yes, thank you.